Well, sorry about this, folks. It looks like we had a bit of a, an outage quickly there, so I had to uh, reboot everything. Sorry about that. That came out of nowhere. And guess what? With that outage, all my photos have gone. How about that for a kick in the gut? So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to think on my feet for a little bit, and I've got my books here with me. I'm going to have to show you the pictures in front of the screen like this, and we're going to have to do it that way. Um, don't know why the computer did that. It is very frustrating for me. But um, yeah, we'll have a go. So uh, if I remember some of the, some of the, uh, the birds that I remembered, um, we'll start. And uh, just to sort of show you what sort of bird books that I keep with me, these are all pretty much uh, what we call field companions or books that are ideal for taking on drive with you, for giving you the basic information, just a basic description. And the first bird that pretty much most South African guides have with them is this one. It is called uh, Sassel Birds of Southern Africa, third edition. Of course, it's revised uh, with all the new, new things. And it's, uh, it's an amazing book. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just got a nice way to be able to try and um, sort of find what, what type of bird it is. So when you turn to the first page, the first thing you see is the different types of birds. So even if you don't know what the bird really, what the name of the bird is or what type of bird it is, you can go to any one of these pictures and they basically are the groups of birds that you will find. And, uh, and then you, you see underneath some of the, the sort of page numbers. So if it's got a, a long tail, have a look at this one that looks similar to that. You click to that particular, or you turn to that particular page and, uh, and have a look. So it's a really easy way to be able to, uh, to do some birding. Then I've got a new one here, which among birders will know, Roberts. Roberts is pretty much the sort of way to go when looking at birds. And this little field companion, which is uh, relatively new, it's only about a year or two old. Uh, it came out. It's the smaller version of the very, very large book. It's like the Bible of the bird book. And uh, it's an amazing, amazing book. Just sort of show you a particular picture in here. So uh, with all the books, the basic things are you'll see, um, they give you a little map of what we call distribution of where they occur, a picture of it. Uh, sometimes they'll give you uh, differences between males and females, and then a short little description on the side of it telling you scientific names, what it does, what it eats, and all that sort of thing. So. Uh, a very, very good book that uh, for a lot of you that are doing birding. It's uh, the Roberts Bird Guide. And for me, this has got to be my top one to carry on drive with me. And then, not, not as much as a, a descriptive book, but certainly one that has got more information about bird behavior. Um, it's, it's, quite, it's also relatively new, but the author has done, a few, has done two other books on mammals. It's called Beat About the Bush. And it's quite a, quite a thick book, you can see. It's called Beat About the Bush Birds. Okay, it's written by Trevor Carnaby. And he's got two others about mammals. And this book, any bird in southern Africa, whether it's you know, about anything, whether it's a food source or general behavior, you name it, it's got it. And uh, what I like about this book is in the front, it's got all the new names that have been changed. And uh, I was reading it today. 300 birds in Southern Africa ha names have changed since the whole sort of change around. And um, yeah, it's, it really is for, for those on, on going on drive or on safari, this is really something to, uh, to keep with you. Not on drive, it's quite heavy and big. But certainly uh, in your bag, read during the day, pick up on a bit of information. And as a guide, you read 10 pages a night and you are going to be absolutely sorted for knowledge on birds. All right, so uh, what I'm going to be doing, <coughs> I'm going to be using this book for, uh, for the pictures. They've got very, very good pictures of birds. Um, and what I'll do is I'll start. I'll put up the first one, and uh, let's see who can send it in, and then we'll do a bit of a discussion on it. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to try that. And this picture here, this bird, okay, it's got the juvenile form with the brown at the bottom and it's got when the wings are open in flight and it's got it sitting perched so let's see if anyone can come through and tell me what particular bird this is and then we'll have a quick little discussion on it and let's see if we can get a few on this 
Well, <laughs> um, so far, just reading the chat rooms, I've got uh, someone saying white vulture. No, not a white vulture. It's a penguin. No, come on, it's not a penguin. But one and golden e the golden eagle we don't have here in uh, in southern Africa. Seeing some people are getting it right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Let's see. Dave Hill has sent. Yes. Okay. So so far we've got uh, we've got it right. And it's the African fish eagle. This for me, why I chose it first. This for me is probably a bird that. If you've got water, generally you have fish eagles, of course fish eagle, because its diet is predominantly fish. But this particular eagle's call um, is, is certainly a call that is synonymous with the African bush. Um, during the day, to hear this distant call and look in the skies soaring above you as this beautiful fishy, fish eagle sort of swoops around and uh, will eventually perch alongside the dam. I'm going to try my, uh, my best at a fish eagle call. It's not the best, but uh, but here we go. So there we go. That's my best fish eagle version. And um, of course, it, uh, it as I said, it predominantly f eats fish. But I have seen it on odd occasions feeding on termites during the during the, the sort of rains in summer. Um, but that's of course is. Uh, Real extreme situations, but there we go. So uh, the African fish eagle looks very similar to the golden eagle, or the is it the American bald eagle? I think it is, um, with that white head and, and dark body. So there we go. Um, if if it is, if it does look similar to some of the birds that you folks at home have got, please let me know. And uh, if you'd like to email me with some of your uh, answers, you can email me at final control at safari.tv and um, yeah we can uh, have a chat about it and uh, see if you can come through with uh, some of the others. I'm just going to put up a banner there so you know the email. Alrighty, I've got to go through and have a look at the others. got to remember which ones I had now. Um, and of course this, I'm going to start out with the easy ones folks. This is not what, <laughs> it's not going to stay like this. I'm going to throw in a few what we call crackers in there. Got to try to find it. All right. This is a bird now that we get here quite often. Um, we've been seeing on a regular basis. And a few people have been sort of getting it wrong as to what it is. So here we go. It's number four. There we go. What bird is that? This is this is a bit of a more bit more difficult. Let me see if I can bring it closer. There we go. All right, I'll let, I'll let you look at it a bit more. All righty, let's see. Let's see what we have. Quail, not a quail, very similar to that of quail, but here in southern Africa, the quail are a bit smaller, probably half the size of this type. I've got someone saying here, Egyptian goose, certainly not Egyptian goose. This is not a water bird. Um, Egyptian geese are about two or three times bigger than this bird. Partridge, partridge of some sort, um, very similar to partridge, which we don't really have them here. So not a partridge. People saying a Franklin. Okay, but which Franklin, folks? Which one? It's too easy. It is a Franklin. Yes, it is. Someone saying a Cory Busted here. Not a Cory Busted. Come on, guys. Let's see. Just uh, getting, uh, getting a general question here from Laura saying, I wonder if you've already seen the video archives of the grey heron swimming like a duck. Yes, I have, Laura. Um, <laughs> saw it the other day swimming at, uh, at Buffalsock Dam. So there we go. All right, I've already got one winner here. Uh, sent in via email. Dave Hill has got it. Let's have a look. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Someone's saying a Benjamin Franklin. Certainly not. Kirkwe Franklin. Now this is this is the tricky one because a lot of people are getting it mixed up with the Kirkwe Franklin, and it's not the Kirkwe Franklin. Okay, I've got uh, Crested Franklin. No, not a Crested Franklin. So far, I've got two people. One person on on chat and one person in email. Not Kirkwe. A lot. Of, oh, there we go. Valerie's got it. Okay, so we've got it. It's the Shelley's Franklin. Shelley's Franklin. 
Well done, guys. Well done. Okay, so Shelley's Franklin, it's more of the sort of rarer of the Franklins that you, you don't really see, but you will hear them quite a bit. Um, it's a bird that we are getting here quite a, sort of quite often now. And um, during the summer, it's going to be very difficult, of course, with the thicker vegetation um, and the taller grasses, so you're not going to see them walking around. But certainly now that uh, we're going into winter, it's going to dry out a little bit, and uh, we're going to be seeing these birds quite a bit more, the, both the Coqui and the Shelley's Franklin. And uh, I can't do the call for you. That's something that's uh, very, very difficult. But, um, yeah, there we go. All right. So, next one. I'm not going to throw in, I don't know if anyone knows the terms LBJs. Does anyone know the term LBJ? I can't throw that in because that's just very difficult. Very, very difficult. All right. I'm going to throw in a bit, a bit, more, of a, a bit more of a difficult one, shall, shall we? All righty. Are you ready for this? There we go. Okay, it's got sort of marks on the breast and the head. If you look in the background, you'll see that it is gregarious. So it lives a life with many other birds. Let's see if you get, can get this one. Come on, guys. Little brown job. There we go. Little brown job. LBJ. This is um, probably about the body from head to toe. It's probably about 20 centimeters on this particular bird. Oh, wow. Someone's already got it in the wee chat room. Let's see. Oh, David Hill again. You've got it. Okay, David Hill. I'm not going to say it until some... Yep. Oh, wow. Well, the guys are getting it. This is fantastic. Cysticola. Certainly not a cysticola or cysticula. Okay, just reading some of the others here. Oh, a few of them are getting it. Wow, okay, that's well, okay, that's very good. I underestimate you all. I underestimate you all. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to throw some very difficult ones in there. But um, there we go. So we've got uh, Dave Hill, of course, Eden in the Wii chat room. Uh, Bulalio has got it. And let's see who else in this. Uh, Valerie has got it. Sure, you guys are doing very well. And it's an arrow marked babbler. Arrow marked babbler. Laura sent in a red chested cuckoo. No, not a red chested cuckoo. Sorry, Laura. Red chested cuckoo is a very seasonal thing, uh, much bigger than an arrow marked babbler. And a red chested cuckoo does not live in a gregarious society uh, where arrow marked babbler does. Uh, if you remember a couple of days ago on Drive, I had a group of them doing and performing their allomimetic behavior. And uh, yeah, there we go. Dave Hill is just saying I sent a Sassel bird book to Final Control. Yes, it is. Oh, let me just grab it here for you, David. There we go. Dave, I've got your book here that uh, Dave sent to us. And uh, just try and get, I'm sure you, there we go. Dave Hill sent us a book and he wrote in it for us just to sort of show you. There we go, Dave Hill. To all the Wild Earth staff. Just a small token of appreciation from Dave Hill. There we go. So there we go. Dave have got it. And that's the Sassel birds. Okay, so since you guys are, are getting this right, I might just have to throw in a little bit of a tricky one. And, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to throw in one of the smaller brown ones. And let's see if you can, uh, can get it. All right, it's uh, it's brown, and it's number three on the on the bird list, and this one, there, there we go. Okay, so just by looking at the body, remember when we are trying to identify birds, you're looking at the body structure to be able to see where it's where it basically lives and what its body is adapted for feeding wise. Note it's got some longer legs, so this is a water bird. That's the only hint I'm giving you because you guys are way too good. This is a water bird. Number three. All right. Let's see if you guys can crack this one. Let's see. 
spotted thickney, not a spotted thickney. This is smaller than a spotted thickney. I see someone's already got the group of birds that it is. Hmm, that's a bit of a different one. Cory Busted, no, this is very small. This is only about um, 15 centimeters tall. Cory Busted's also not a water bird. Penguins live in water. <laughs> yes, they do, Shaggy, but this is not a penguin. Uh, the one on the hippo's back, no, the one on the hippo's back is a hamacorp. Hamacorp, much bigger, a lot more brown. A heron, not a heron. I'm just reading here. Ah, okay, so it seems like a lot of the people that are generally getting it, someone's saying a green heron, we don't get green herons here. Saddlebilled stook, definitely not. Saddlebilled stook stands about a meter tall from head to, uh, to toe, so not. Brown heron, no. I see some people have got it. I'm not going to mention who it is. Let's see. Cory Busted, no. Come on, guys. I've only seen two people with it. Hmm. Eden is on the right track here in Wild Earth chat room. Eastern Pale Chanting Gossalk 2. Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh. It's a crocodile light snack. Yes, it could be. It's a bit small for a crocodile snack. Okay, it is a wood sandpiper. It's a bird that we get along around um, Gowry Dam, a bird that we find at Buffalo's Hook Dam. It's a, it's a smallish bird, about this big. Um, and you can get it mixed up with either the, the green shank or one of the, uh, one of the, the sandpipers. So well done to those of you. Eden got it. Um, Sally got it. Ah, oh, you guys are doing well. You guys are doing very well. Didn't get it. Oh, common sandpiper. Very close. Sandpiper, I'll give it to you, Dave. But the, the one that I had was the wood sandpiper, the more common of them here. Laura, once again, crown plover. Similar size, similar habitat, Laura, but uh, not quite the crowned plover there. Well done, though. Well done, guys. Some of you are very, very good at this. I'm, gonna ha I'm, I'm thinking about doing a bit of a bird drive one of these days. And, uh, of course, not just exclusively looking at birds, but um, coming if, if I see anything move, I'm certainly going to be uh, going out for it. So uh, if a lot of you are keen on that, let me know. Okay, time to stop this playing around. Let's see. Right, this next one is quite one that we see very often. And if you don't get this, then I'm going to be very disappointed. I've seen this already many, many times. Number five. And for me, it also gives a call that is uh, very much an African sound. It goes... Just a constant sort of buzzing in and out. That's all I'm giving you. I'm not giving you any hints except the call. Little brown job. That's not little. Bro that's not little and brown. Well, it is little. Okay, let's have a look. A weaver, not a weaver. Ah, the same person's got it again. The same people have got it again. Guys, are got to give the other people a chance. Sure. A bee eater, not a bee eater, David. Um, if you have a look at the beak, bee eaters generally have beaks that are. A lot more uh, sort of thin and recurved. I'm going to show you 